The Travels of Marco Polo Born in Venice in 1254, Marco Polo travelled with his father and uncle to Asia and chronicled his travels. He jocularly said, I did not write half of what I saw, for I knew I would not be believed. In this video, we explore his life as a sailor and bring to light some lesser known facts about this seafarer. He left for Asia when he was hardly 17 years old, probably the youngest to take up a voyage of this magnitude and proportion. His mother died when he was only five, and he met his father only when he was 15, as the father and uncle were away on voyages. Two years later, he took the most important journey of his life, hardly knowing his co-travelers. He travelled to Central Asia and China at a time when there were hardly any road maps or sea courses charted by man. When he returned from his journey, he brought back memories of this new world discovered and helped in demystifying the culture, language and habits of the people of Asia and China. His travels were not a bed of roses. He faced numerous hardships some of which he mentioned in his memories. Though to many, it may seem he was the first to explore Asia and China, he wasn't the first. Other European travellers had done it before him. In fact, his father and uncle had travelled to China and met Kublai Khan, and this was a repeat of the journey to the kingdom. It is said that Kublai Khan was interested in learning about Christianity as he had heard a lot about the Polo family. The emperor wanted them to bring with them hundred Christians with whom he would discuss religion and the holy oil from Jerusalem. They managed to procure oil and took only Marco Polo with them. Marco Polo left home at age 17 and didn't return to Venice for 24 years. Over the course of two decades, he travelled around 15,000 miles both on land along the Silk Road and by sea coming across parts of Asia and, if some highly controversial maps are to be believed, visited parts of the Alaskan coast. When he returned to Venice in 1295, he found them at war with Genoa and took up arms for his motherland. He went to jail after a skirmish and there he met a romantic writer, Rusticello of Pisa, to whom he narrated his tales of adventure. And after that, the writer prepared the manuscript. It must be said that Marco Polo learnt many languages on his trips, but he doesn't mention Chinese as one of them. Marco Polo is credited with introducing paper money to Europe. Kublai Khan already had done so in China. He encountered many animals during his travels and is said to have brought the Chow Chow breed of dogs, musk deer and yak hitherto unknown in Europe. During his travels, however, he found endless quantities of rare species, costing virtually nothing. And while he may not have brought ice cream to Europe either, as some sources suggest, he does describe an early power shake. The Mongols reportedly dried milk and, while riding, would add water to the milk in a flask. Riding with said flask would cause the mixture to churn, resulting in thick syrup. He believed in sorcery and evil spirits and is said to have met a number of astrologers in the court of Kublai Khan. He has a she-breed named after him. Kublai Khan got so attracted to him that he refused to let him go back to his home and after much convincing the emperor allowed him to escort a prince and gave him a golden tablet which would bring good luck. Though there were unending debates regarding the authenticity of the tales, it must be said that Marco Polo did what very few would venture at his time and age.